If you're looking to buy a kayak this season, like I am, then you may be interested in how I'm going about the decision process to narrow down the options to figure out which ones I'm going to go demo. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Over the last couple weeks, I've spent a lot of time, and I know you guys have too, giving me feedback on what are the competitive options I should examine as I make my decision. And as a result of that feedback, I've created this spreadsheet right here that captures all of the input. Now granted, many of these are subjective, and it all depends on your perspective, but I think this is as good as it's going to get leading into my personal decision. Now the interesting thing is when I ask people to pick what they would get, 46% recommended that I get the Jackson and 26% recommended I get the Hobie. The Wilderness Radar kind of came in at the end, so it didn't really get as much scores. The other uh, options are the ones you see here on the, on the spreadsheet because that's how they got there. A lot of people recommend that I check the PDL, the Pilot, the Feel Free, and of course the Slayer. So here's how I'm going about taking this information and distilling it down. The first thing I had to do was look at my personal criteria and then narrow down the choices based on things that I just didn't think I could live with. And when you look up here at the top, ranging from the Hobie Compass down to the Feel Free, the consistent problem was no high-low seat. Based on where I fish, I really need to have some additional elevation when I need it, and I also want to be able to drop down to get out of the wind to be able to move a little bit faster. The other thing is, I spend a heck of a lot of time in really shallow water. So the ability to be able to operate the boat in you know a foot or so of water below my hull is pretty critical. And for all these with the traditional removable propeller drive, I'd have to take that out and it just end up sitting on the bow of my kayak for most of my trip. So for those reasons, I eliminated the uh, propel down through the feel free. I eliminated the, the Hobie compass because I've seen some videos that challenge the durability of that seat. I saw a video where one of the seat latches popped right out of the side of the kayak. So given that arrangement, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that and then just keep the Outback. So now when you go look at the remaining options, what's important and what's not. So when I looked at what was important to me, I moved all of the things that were important up to the top and I dropped the things that weren't really important to me, but maybe to you, down to the bottom. So for example, I don't really care about cup holders. I don't really care about having an open bow trunk as long as I have, have space. I don't care about having a paddle included because I'm going to want to buy the paddle that's right for me. So now let's look at these top three options. And to do that, I popped them into another place on my spreadsheet. And then where everything was the same, like speed, the ability to do reverse, things like that, I just dropped that down to the bottom of the spreadsheet because they're not really worth considering. They're all the same. And that left me with the key items up here at the top. And based on those, I knew I need to get down to just two choices. So I decided to really take a look at the characteristics of that wilderness. And after looking at it and, you know, poking it and kicking the tires in the store, I decided I need to eliminate that because I just wasn't confident that the drive system, even though it had that great kick to be able to go up to zero draft instantly, uh, was going to meet my criteria. And it just didn't feel like it was as robust and solid as the drives on the Hobie or the Jackson. So with that, I ended up down with the two options. And now before I go out and actually uh, demo them, I needed to, to rate to myself where they would stack up. And so 
I weighted each of the key criteria to me, making sure they added up to 100, 100%. And then for each, for each kayak, I went and scored that particular criteria against the weight. So for example, on length, I weighted that as 5% of my decision. And given that the Hobie was just a little bit shorter than the Jackson, I only gave it four point wise. The ability to move in shallow water, I think is really, really important to me. And so that's 20% of my de decision criteria. And the fact that the Hobie can operate in two or three inches of water, got it a score of 18, but that zero draft ability where it comes all the way up on the uh, Kuza got it a full 20. So when you add all those things up, the Hobie comes in at 75 and the Jackson comes in at 80. Then when you go look at the things that I would need to buy to help fully outfit each of them, the Hobie also ends up being $400 cheaper. So it's a little less on the score, but also a little bit cheaper. So when I look at that $416 and amortize that over 10 years, that's only $41 a year. Or if I only keep it five years, that's 80 bucks a year. So is $80 worth it to me to have the best kayak possible so I can enjoy every fishing trip? Yeah, I think so. But we've got to see how that Kuza ends up against the Hobie in terms of comfort and fit and whether I feel right in it. And that'll be the next step. So I appreciate all the input I've gotten so far. And if you've got additional guidance on maybe something I'm doing wrong here in my decision process, please throw it down below because I know a lot of guys are following this video thread as they face the same decision as I am. You know, in the end, it all comes down to a personal preference and what boat we feel comfortable in. But I want to make sure I pick the right one and don't leave anything out. Thanks again for your help.